So the word defibrillator for today, where we're trusting God for a word from within the word. Very, very big, this one. Very, very big one. Now, this one is what we are adding to what fundamental scriptures do we need to have in our world to be able to walk in the fullness of God, that we are getting everything in line with him and possibly what is needed to, to be done. And also needed as to what we want to have done. And I will be discussing about uh, what do you want. Okay, so one of the words I want us to do a study on first is wealth. Abundance of valuable material possessions or resources. Resources, very important. Valuable material possessions. Very, very important. So now, let's go into the scripture. Now, it's talking about going into your promised land. But we will get to that at a later stage. For today, it's what needs to happen before that happens. But it does give us a preview of what is to come. So we're going to Deuteronomy 8 verse 6. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, to walk in his ways and reverently fear him. And reverently is understanding that you are a child of the Father, that wow moment of understanding that which induces you, a, in, within you, a wanting to serve and an unwillingness to offend. So that's what reverence is, a wanting to serve and an unwillingness to offend, realizing your relationship with him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs, flowing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you shall eat food without shortage and lack nothing in it, a land whose stones are iron, of whose hills you can dig copper. Now, very important. It says that if you keep the commandments of your Lord, your God, to walk in his ways and reverently fear him, this is what you will be doing as he is bringing you into a good land, your promised land. Now, he gives you everything. He gives you the mountains, the fountains. He gives you the wheat, the barley. He gives you the copper. He gives you all the provisions that you need wealth so he's looking after you in every area all the resources you will ever need to feed yourself but also to progress and to grow now watch this here's the requirement the only thing he wants back from you is when you have eaten and are full <laughs> so i'm taking you in you don't have to work for it. You just be obedient. Obey my commandments. Walk in my ways. I'm taking you into the promised land. That's already been decided before you even arrived here. Yeah? And you are part of that. You go into your promised land to fulfill your purpose and your destiny. And in that, he gives you a brief of what it's going to look like. And then he tells you when you are, have eaten and are full. What? So he's not saying make an offering to me, run around the block 10 times, put a lot of time and effort in. He says, I'm taking you into the promised land. I want you to enjoy it. I want you to eat and I want you to be full. When you are in that position, that sugar rush position, then you shall bless the Lord your God for all the good land which he has given you. Be very, very careful. We must understand that we don't get involved with God to get what we want. And when we've got what we want, we forget God. He's not holding anything against you. He's not making you perform or do any special sacrifices. That He's just saying, do not forget me and remember to thank me for what I have done for you. Understand that there is going to be no good thing in your world that is not supplied by God. Do not think it is of you. Do not think, hey, I'm so great and fantastic. Look what I have done. It's look what the Lord has done. And for you to bless the Lord 
for all the good land which he gives, which he has given you. Very, very important. I'm going to ask you the question, what is blessed? And how do you bless God who has everything? That's a, a, a very difficult kind of, hold on a second. Well, bless is to hallow or concentrate, consecrate. Um, it's to hallow with the sign of the cross. It's to remember Jesus Christ, what he has done for you, to bless him for being uh, so great, so fantastic, so awesome. And remember, a blessing is requiring nothing in return. And this is amazing. God has already given you, and he just doesn't want you to forget it. Very, very important. Then it goes back to verse 11. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by keeping his commandments, his precepts, and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all you have is multiplied, then your minds and hearts be lifted up and forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. This is extremely important. How many times have I sought the Lord's face on my knees, called, pe called people into prayer, and as soon as God shows up, I get so busy I forget him. Yo, don't forget who led you through the great and terrible wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there is no water but who brought you forth water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. So there again, God is testing you. Some of us are in that place. Some of us are beginning this journey. Some of us are walking through it and go, oh, Sean, how long is the testing? How long do I have to go through this? Well, for me, it's for as many times as it takes for you and I to get it right. I mean, they were close to the promised land when they wandered around in the desert. But they just didn't get the point, did they? Apparently, it was like two and a half weeks walk and they were in the promised land. Forty years later, there was a few things that needed to be in place before that came to pass. So it's seeking God's face, putting our plans before him. Plans to prosper us, not to harm us. We need to go seek him and ask him for the answers. And yeah, he's saying, hey, just, just walk him. Just keep my commandments, my precepts, and my statutes. Very, very important. And beware lest you say in your mind and heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. Father, we've heard this word so many times, this word wealth. And thank you, Father, the next scripture is where it's going to be revealed. But Father, we thank you as for today. We take a deep breath, lest we forget who you are and what you've done and what you're busy doing in our lives. Father, and if we're in a difficult place, place at this moment in time where we know we've been tested, Father, I thank you that you have given us the strength to endure it, that you would not put us in a position that we can't handle without providing a way out. And Father, we praise you and we thank you for this, for this moment. Father, we thank you for all the good things that you've done in our lives, Father. The fact that we are here able to pray and speak to you today is a miracle within its own, Father. The fact that we can breathe, that we can see, we can walk, we can talk, Father. The fact that we live, we just want to praise you, bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the promised land. Thank you, Father, for the land of milk and honey. Thank you, Father, for for flocks multiplying and our silver and gold is multiplying and all you have is multiplied. Father, we thank you for this. May we not forget you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.